Hi guys and welcome back to another edition of Crime Time on The Big Shift with me, Stephen Gillen. Firstly, I'd like to thank all you guys out there who have been going into the website, getting a copy of the Monkey Puzzle Tree, of course, soon to be a film. You know, we're doing a wonderful stuff in there with the content, guys. You know, there's a new uh, subscription model that we're putting there. To, you know, to help guys, there's Q&A. We're getting a lot of global influencers in there to answer your questions and really help you along your way. Go in there and have a look. I hope you're okay out there today. I really do. Now, today we're going to talk about Parkhurst and the Isle of Wight and one of the greatest escapes I, I certainly ever saw whilst I was in prison or ever heard of, ever. Parkhurst back in the days, guys, was called The Rock. We used to call it The Rock. You know, there's a massive stretch of water between the British mainland and the Isle of Wight where three main prisons was in them days. Uh, Camp Hill, Albany, Parkhurst being the main one. Parkhurst in them days was the most high security long term prison people could have certainly have been sent. It was the closest thing in England we certainly had to an Alcatraz, right? Now, it has certainly gone down in the annals of criminal history, Parkhurst, and some of the unbelievable and notorious prisoners who have stayed there over the years. I'm going to go back to the time when I was there. Some of you may have remembered I had done, done some content about where I first met Charlie Bronson and the IRA had escaped from the Brixton Special Secure Unit and I was then moved to Wandsworth. What actually happened, guys, after that was when they kept me in Wandsworth, I was down there because they thought I was trying to procure firearms and aid and escape and get out of there, right? And shoot my way out of there. This is what they were saying. But what actually happened was a couple of weeks after I was ghosted and I was taken to Parkhurst and the Isle of Wight. Now, the truth is that back in the day, Parkhurst was one of the best prisons I could have certainly went to as a serving category A with a long-term sentence. I went to D-Wing, which was one of the uh, new wings over the back. There was, two, there was two wings over the back because you had a lot of older wings there, but they would uh, built a couple of new wings over the back that was more newer, and I was put on there. Now, there was a lot of wonderful guys on there in the day. You know, you had uh, guys from the Arab family was there. Eddie Richardson was there. I used to play um, Eddie... Batman a lot. He used to do his painting and all that. He was a great artist. You know, it was great at oil paintings in there at that time, Eddie. Billy Gentry. Uh, Sid Draper. You had a lot, a lot of really well-known guys in there at that time. Vic Dark was another one on the, on the other wing. And the first thing I would say about Parkhurst is it was one of the main places where you couldn't just go unless you was known. Because everyone there would have known someone or knew the history of someone or knew someone through someone. So there was a lot of stand-up proper guys in that prison at that time. I was still very young then, so I learned a lot from them older guys there. I really did. And they embraced me. They looked after me. Then, you know, they really helped me along in a sentence that was very, very tough for me. I had a lot of friends there. What I'm going to talk about is... Um, a great escape, one of the all-time greatest escapes from Parkhurst, which I know many people don't know about, and it certainly hasn't been broadcast. I had a lot of friends there, as I said, you know, and I was recently talking to Vic Dart. Some of you may know him, good friend. He was a, a really stand-up guy. He was on the other wing, Vic. You know, he was a high-risk cat, eh? There's a lot of content out there about Vic. I was actually talking to Vic a little while ago, you know, in some messages. And we recounted some of our time at Parkhurst. You know, he said, Steve, you're one of the Parkhurst few, still. 
you know, remaining. And I remembered them times there with Vic and all these guys, and I thought, yeah, this is another rage apart. You know, because now Parkhurst has been decategorized and there's not the really flagship high security prison it used to be back in the days, guys. Back to the escape. Parkhurst was seen as an escapable prison. Certainly no one had ever, ever, ever escaped from there. It was like Alcatraz, right? We call it the rock because of this. Security was very, very tight. You had all the high security prisoners there in them days. But I want to tell you about a wonderful escape that was so simple, so clever in its execution, that the person who escaped, a very good friend of mine, was in the British mainland pretty much even before they knew that he'd gone. So, I'll tell you what happened. Barkhurst has a big um, compound, we used to call it. So you used to come out, you'd go through all these gates and everything else, and you'd go into what was a big yard, it was called the compound. You know, we'd play football on there. You know, there was different things that could happen on there. You know, you could even grow tomatoes and stuff like that on there. You know, there was a toilet and another changing room bit on there. But pretty much in this compound, as in the rest of the prison, you was watched all the way, and you wasn't escaping from these different places within the prison. That's how Parkhurst was set up. There was a family, friends of mine, they was well known in the system then. They was a North London family, criminal family. One of them was a friend of mine from this North London family. I won't say his name, but he was a very, very good friend of mine. And he worked out a simple plan, how to get out of Parkhurst, under cover of all the guards without any fuss, be on the hovercraft, back to the British mainland before they even knew. I'll tell you how he done it. When you used to come from the blocks, from the main blocks over the back in Parkhurst, you'd come through a series of steps and gates and come down, then you'd walk through a little kind of an alleyway, and then there was an opening where you would walk through and you would go into the fortified compound. They used to have, you know, be little Judas boxes where the officers would count the, count the prisoners in and out. This took a lot of planning. And there was, you know, a few other kind of guys who was, who was going to escape on this day as well. But they kind of had a look at things and they said, uh, do you know what? We're going to pull back from this. So that left it to my one friend. And he said, you know what? I think this is a goer. I'm going to go for it. Fair play to him. So what he'd done is he made up a, you know, paper mache doll and all that in his bed. He put it in his bed. He got someone on the wing when the officers come round to just be at his door and say, yeah, 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 I'll see you later. Close the door. All of this was planned, guys. But what, how he actually done it was when we went down to go into the exercise yard and the compound, he went out there, the officers counted him out. But when he come back, he got someone to make sure that they double counted him. And he disappeared behind what was like another little box where the bins was. So the officer kept counting. The count was correct. All the, all the inmates went up to their wing and the gates was locked behind them. This was in the morning time, a morning exercise, going into the afternoon, guys. So uh, the inmates had gone back for their dinner at this time. Back on the wing, you know, when they're doing the lockup, guys have had their dinner and all that, and they're doing the lockup cell by cell, and they're checking numbers as they do again. This guy, my friend, he made sure that someone was at his door as if he was talking to someone in the cell, just as this officer was coming along, uh, along checking all the numbers. Bye bye, he said to him, and closed the flap. So when the officer came, it already had been programmed or saw or thought that there was a conversation going on there. But when he looked in there, all he could see was the dummy in there turned over in the bed. So he thought someone was in the bed. He's just been talking, he's in bed, right? The wing was locked down for the afternoon. The officers went for their dinner and all that. Now, while they'd done this, this was the time and it had been planned. And my friend knew that this was when the bin lorry come in to pick up the bins in Parkhurst. 
So the bin lorry come in. While they was uh, loading the bins on the back and taking away the waste, he crawled underneath the bin lorry, up underneath, inside, inside the bin lorry itself, underneath. Unbelievable story, guys, because he actually told me this himself. He said, Steve, when I got to the gate house and it drove to the gate house, now you have to remember how this works in a gate house for all vehicles coming in and out of prisons, guys. At the top, there's a, there's a mirror so they can see if anyone's hanging on the roof. And they've also got mirrors on, on sticks so they can put it underneath vehicles, cars and all this and check for stuff, right? Or if anyone's hiding in there. So he said, Steve, I knew this. So what I've done, he said, I actually moved from the place where I was underneath the front, front of the lorry and I moved back somewhere else. And he said, just after that, in the gatehouse, the officer come underneath and looked at where I'd just been earlier. But they checked everything with the bin, didn't find him, opened the doors, out he went in the bin lorry, doors closed, that was it. Don't forget now, guys, this is over dinner time. No one's, no one knows anything about this escape because they're all in their dinner. So, you know, the bin lorry drove. My friend, he got out, stopped at a traffic light, he rolled out, he got under. It already had some money, knowing that he would have to rush really, really quickly, you know, to the ferry terminal, get the fastest boat, hovercraft out of there, which he did. Jumped on the hovercraft, made a speedy, speedy, uh, speedy escape over to the mainland. And around this time, he was already on the British mainland when back in Parkhurst, one of the most highest security places, certainly in the UK British penal system then, the balloon went up and they suddenly realised there was a prisoner missing. Now, the first thing they have to do when the prisoner's missing is search the prison, right? Because they don't think he's escaped from the prison. There's no way. Parkhurst was escape proof. So this takes hours, guys, right? So they're searching the prison and all that. And by this time, my friend, a very ingenious and clever guy, was already in the British mainland and had disappeared. This was a wonderful escape in its uh, uh, ingenuity, in its, in, its, in its planning and in its execution. And certainly from one of the most secure places of the time. It was one of the greatest escapes I have certainly ever seen. Hope you like that story, guys. It's a true, true story of a wonderful friend of mine. And I always remember this escape. In my eyes, it was one of the best I ever seen. See you next time.